Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program. In this video I present the SR-71, which I modeled in Blender as usual. And it doesn't have a good bump map yet. I'm uh, debating exactly how to handle that uh, feature. Uh, so it's rather plasticky smooth at the moment. But uh, otherwise, it's uh, looking generally okay. And uh, the, the sort of sheen on it is thanks to Textures Unlimited right now. Uh, there are parts on here that I did not make. The landing gear, of course, is just stock landing gear with a recolor. And then uh, the engines are from Advanced Jet Engines. Do I have to rescale them? By default, the engines look too small. So I went into the configuration and rescaled it. You might have to come up with your own solution for that. But they're the right engines, the J58P4s. And of course, the control surfaces, including the entire vertical stabilizers, because those are all moving, I relied on B9 procedural wings for. And so we've got all of these. This needs to be more of a gap. Now, because the wings aren't in symmetry, uh, because their shape is unique, um, that means that the control surfaces are placed individually. That's a little bit of a hassle, but there we are. And so just to show you what the parts are and how they put get put together. So typing in SR71, obviously this will be, these parts will be in the video description. And so the body, like that. And still working on the whole cockpit thing. The actual, the cockpit hatches are actually our own individual parts. And so after the body, we need the left inner wing. So there's a node there for it and the right inner wing node there for that and then the left engine pod or oops, left engine pod like so right engine pod like so and then left outer wing and then right outer wing so those are the parts there is a quirk unfortunately first of all as usual, I've had difficulty trying to get it past the speed of sound. That happens with like everything. But I've already pulled the tricks that I pulled on the other planes. And I've gotten it past the speed of sound, but it's a little bit weird. So I put the far aerodynamic model on this wing piece and that wing piece, but I left it off of the outer ones. And that's because it has a serious roll on takeoff otherwise. In fact, it still has a serious roll on takeoff, but it's manageable. But it has a rightward roll, and that's why I didn't put the far aerodynamic model on the wings of my other models, because uh, it had that rightward tendency that was uncontrollable. But now, because the wing is basically split in two, well, or four, um, that means that I can leave it off of the outer ones, and it allows me to control it better. The far aerodynamic model makes it easier to go past the speed of sound, but uh, again, if you can't take off, that's sort of an academic situation. Uh, so yeah, I don't understand why it does that. I still need to investigate that. It's probably probably has to do with the orientation of the parts in Unity or something. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm gonna open the craft file up that I had built already, and we'll see how it flies. Okay, and uh, just note, sometimes it flops on its tail and can't recover, in which case just push down on the control surfaces, down, they'll push the nose down, so that's proper. But, uh, a little quirk there. I'm gonna use Atmospheric Autopilot, throttle up, and here we go. Without the far aerodynamic model, it takes off at a decent uh, decent speed, but with it, it seems to require more speed. And here I'm gonna... Okay, actually I compensated, so here's the rightward tendency here. Uh, you can see, and once we get past like about 120 meters per second, it's fine. Well, in fact, even right now it's fine. I wonder if the landing here has something to do with it, but I don't know. I did not build pre-coolers into the engine to sell Ooh, ooh, it's got a, it's rightward tendency is strong. Ah, okay. Yeah, keep it above 120 meters per second. That would be a good idea. It's, it's weird. It doesn't have this problem with 
leaving off the far aerodynamic model and just using the stock one. So, I don't know. Otherwise, the air intakes are built into the air intakes, obviously. You can see the intake area and all that business. I don't know if it's configured perfectly, but it sure feeds the engines. It does have a missing pre-cooler ratio zero on there. I don't know what that means. I mean, I can build a pre-cooler into this engine pod, but I don't know what kind it needs, because I looked through the AJE files, Advanced Jet Engine files, and I, I just don't know what module I need to put if that helps. And also, it seems to get the thrust that I was expecting. It's not the thrust that's the problem, though more thrust is always welcome, of course. If you want to get to Mach 3, you might want to put even more powerful engines than these. We'll have far open. It's sort of got partially sensible data right now. Uh, you can see our lift, the drag. I, I don't think the drag is right, otherwise we'd be accelerating, not decelerating, so it's all weird still. Maybe we should stick closer to the coast. Okay, we're trying to accelerate here now. It still has a rightward tendency. Oh, wow, it's really coupled here. Uh, uh, yeah. Not ideal. Hmm. Maybe SAS will have a better ch a chance. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't think it does. <laughs> uh. Okay, back to atmospheric autopilot. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Thank goodness. Now let's see if we can accelerate while going up would be nice. Okay, well, it might take some time to accelerate through the transonic region, so I'm going to physical time warp here. With the roll tendency, I sort of dread landing this thing, though. The stock aerodynamic version, when these inner wing parts do not have the far aerodynamic model, can get to Mach 1.1 or 1.2, but not too much beyond that. But yeah, you can see it's still using some roll to check a uh, rightward roll tendency. It's very strange. And of course that adds drag. Anytime you use the control surfaces it adds drag, but... I don't know why the far aerodynamic model does it with uh, my parts. It does not appear to do it with any other parts, but... Maybe... well, we could probably go up a little bit higher. This is nowhere near its ceiling. Can we at least get past Mach 2? We've got high dynamic pressure now. Let me just check on the map. Where are we? We're here. I could try and make my way to Norfolk. I put a runway there. We'll need to turn though. Well, still turning at Mach 1.8. Looks like just a little past north will do. It isn't having an easy time. If we still got fuel by the time we get to Norfolk, we can go to John F. Kennedy. This is KSP 1.3.1 where I put all the runways. That's another reason I test all my planes in this version. Because um, I put all the runways in here. And then in subsequent versions, if I try to use them, they end up underground or something like that because the train levels in RSS have changed. Heck, it might end up underground on here too. I might have made some change to the install since I last landed on those. We'll see. Obviously, the SS-71 is not supposed to take all of its fuel just to get to Mach 2, much less Mach 3. But here we are. Well, maybe we can try and go higher first. I'll lose some of the speed. Try and get out of the high dynamic pressure. Well, we have passed Norfolk.
Okay, well, we're getting close to Mach 2 at least. And there's Mach 2. But, yeah, not getting the performance we want to get out of this. It'll keep going, but it'll take a long time, and I want to land now. So. It's interesting, I'm only at two-thirds thrust, but it acts like the engines are off. They make hardly any sound when they don't have afterburners on. I don't know how well Kerbal Constructs runways are lit in the dark. Oh, there it is. We can see the runway. Oh, I should really send now. The runways. Of course, it doesn't look at all like JFK right now. It's in the right location, but the land, the terrain, it doesn't have the right, um... Doesn't have the right shoreline. I made them nice big runways. <laughs> Suitable for many purposes. There's hardly anything else going on around here after all. Okay, gear down. Okay, we're, just, we're going slow. I'm worried about the roll thing. It doesn't seem to be doing anything right now. That tendency. I don't know. It's probably going to catch me by surprise right at the worst possible moment. We're a lot lighter, so we can probably sustain a lower speed. The mass, the dry mass for this is correct and the fuel load is correct in liters. Dry mass is something like 30 tons. Obviously the engines are correct, so the things that I have to play around with to coax it to Mach 1, uh, Mach 3, <laughs> Mach 1 is easy, Mach 3 are limited. Oh, that really sort of tilted a bit. Great. Wow, it really slows down fast. It's got a lot of drag, and I don't know how to get rid of that drag, really. Let's have a rightward tendency. Uh... Okay, get that. Oh, we're gonna skip, we're gonna skip. Okay, take off the brakes. Uh, put on the brakes. Oh, we're on the shoulder. Ow, 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 ow. Look, it is an awkward sort of shoulder that they've got here. All right, we've lost some pieces, but we're sorta in New York. In a very clandestine flight. I really made a huge runway here. Anyway, so with that, uh, and with uh, problems here, if somebody knows something about why my, my wings should be causing a rightward roll, that'd be great. If I could make the outside uh, wings also use the far, far aerodynamic model, that'd be better for getting to Mach 3, though. I'll probably have to increase the amount of lift they get, and also increase the amount of lift this the inner wings get in order to ensure that we get off the ground at a decent speed. But anyway, uh, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.